Hey there everyone and welcome back to Cowboy Survival. I'm Richard and what we're going to do in this video is talk about the purification and storage of large quantities of water at your home. Now there may come a time when the water is unusable, it might be cut off, it might be contaminated, and you'll need quantities of water at home to survive while the water is being prepared or maybe while you find a new source of water. So we're going to talk about that today, but before we get into it, I want you to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. You know, we know that 90% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribers. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you on board. We're going to start some things later on that being a subscriber is going to give you an advantage. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, click that notification bell down at the bottom of the screen. That way, when we issue a new video, you'll get a notification so you can go ahead and watch it. You know, if I'm on the trail, I have my algae bottle full of water. If I run out of this water, I can get water from another source, refill this bottle by filtering that water through my Sawyer water filter, and I can keep going. But when you're at home with your family and the water gets cut off, you're gonna need large quantities of water, and you may not have the time to be filtering it all through Sawyer filters or any other kind of water filter for that matter. You're gonna to need to have a supply of water on hand to get you through the crisis. So that's what we're gonna talk about here. I've got my water bricks. We're gonna look at how to clean these water bricks out, get them ready. We're gonna look at how to fill them up and purify the water that's in them, and then how to store them in a safe place so that that water is accessible when we need it. So hang on, let's just get into it. Before we actually get into the process of cleaning our water containers and purifying the water and, and storing it, let's talk about some of the other issues around the whole concept of water. First of all, let's understand that the reason we have to save up water is because we cannot live without water as human beings. It's one of the things that we need and we need on a daily basis in order to survive. Now, water itself is not going to go bad. Okay, water is just hydrogen and oxygen. It's H2O. There's nothing chemically about the water that's going to make it spoil or go bad or break down. The problem is that water can get contaminants in it. Now, those contaminants can be things like metals and chemicals and things. Those will be filtered out by your water system at home. Second, you're going to have things like, like bacteria and other organisms in the water. Now, it's really important that you get those out of the water or that you kill them. And the reason why is those things in your water are going to live, they're going to reproduce, they're going to die, they're going to create waste, and all that is going to make your water taste bad and, in fact, can actually make the water dangerous for you to drink. It can give you dysentery, it can give you diarrhea, it can actually kill you if that water is dirty enough and has enough bad chemicals in it from biological breakdown. So we have to clean the containers, then we're going to purify the water that we put in there. Now the water that comes out of your water faucet at home, that comes through your water system, is pretty clean. Uh, it's already been, been filtered for all chemicals and all kinds of harmful, harmful other items like that, minerals and, and metals and things. In addition, it's already got chlorine and fluoride in it. But let's remember, that water is purified at a plant. It came through miles and miles of pipes to your home pipes that have been in the ground for 50 years, you turn that faucet and you drink it. I guess it's good for us, doesn't make me sick, but we can have even cleaner water than that at home. Now, how much water do we need? I've done a lot of reading and when it tells me, everything tells me that we need about one gallon of water per person per day at a minimum. Now they tell us we should all be drinking a gallon of water today. I don't know about you, I can't drink a gallon of water today. Maybe I'd be healthier if I did. but a gallon of water per day is a lot of water. And if you have two people in your home, that's two gallons of water per day. If it was four people in your home, that's a minimum of four gallons of water per day. That's a lot of water. Uh, they also recommend that you have two weeks of water. So two gallons of water per day per person is 28 gallons. If you had four people in your home, that's 56 gallons. That's a huge 50 gallon drum every two weeks. Now, I'm not going to actually be using a 50 gallon drum to store my water because to be honest with you, I need my water to be in a container that I can carry. It needs to be in something that is, uh, that's, that doesn't weigh so much that I can't move it around. A 50 gallon water drum at 8 pounds per gallon is going to weigh about 400 pounds. 
I can't move that even if I wanted to, and if I tried, it could fall over and hurt me. So I'm going to use water bricks. The water bricks will hold three and a half gallons each. That means I'm gonna need eight of those water bricks to take care of my household for a two week period. At eight gallons or eight pounds per gallon, that's about 28 pounds per container. I can go get that container from the storage area. I can then take it into my kitchen, set it up with a spigot, and I can use it right there without having to lug around a lot of water. I'm getting older, I'm 65 years old, I've had a heart attack, I don't need to be hauling around 50, 60 gallons or 60 pounds of water. I need that water to be in a manageable size. So I've chosen to use the water bricks. There's certainly a lot of other options out there. Uh, what I like is the water bricks because they are uh, designed for water. They're, they're food quality uh, water bins. Uh, they're opaque, so sunlight cannot get in, and they're going to be watertight so that oxygen can't get in. Now, the water bottles you buy at the store are okay. They're clear, but uh, they, they will keep air out, and that water will be stored. It's clean. It's, it's very clean water, and it's, it's already been purified and it is uh, free from the air, so nothing grows. But it is not free from getting the sunlight come in. And in those plastic bottles, you can sometimes have some leakage of the plastic byproducts into the water that you'd be drinking. So what I want to store water for a long period of time in those water bottles that I get at the grocery store, Probably not. Um, having a supply of those on hand might not be a bad idea, but for my long-term storage, I'm going to have devices or, 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 or um, uh, containers that are specifically designed for the storage of water. So before we get started with this project, remember the first step is to clean and sanitize my containers. I've chosen the three and a half gallon water brick containers. If you remember, I chose these because when they're full, they will weigh 28 pounds. Water weighs eight pounds per gallon. These will weigh 28 pounds when full, and that's about all I want to be carrying. Remember, I had a heart attack just about six months ago, so I don't want to stress my body any more than necessary. A six gallon container would contain almost 50 gallons or 50 pounds of water. That's a heavy container to carry. I want to be able to easily carry these containers from where they're going to be stored to my kitchen. So I chose the smaller containers. I will be adding two quarts of water to this for cleaning and sanitation purposes. Now, I'll put that down. I'm also going to need some standard unscented household bleach. I'm just going to use this Clorox bleach, no big deal. Um, I will be adding this, I'll be adding two quarts of water to my container. I'll be adding two uh, teaspoons uh, of this. You add one teaspoon per quart of water. Um, I've got a measuring spoon here. This is actually a half teaspoon. So I'll have to add four of these for the two quarts of water that I'm going to use to sanitize these containers. To fill the containers, to know that I'm getting how much I'm putting in there, I'm going to be filling my Nalgene bottle and then dumping that into that. This has 32 ounces in it. Uh, I will be doing this twice. Um, that'll get me two quarts. 32 ounces, there's eight cups, uh, eight ounces in a cup, two cups in a pint, which makes 16 ounces, two pints in a quart, which makes 32 ounces. So this is a quart of water, and I will be adding uh, uh, two of these to each container, and then I will be adding uh, an additional four of these half teaspoons of Clorox to that. Now, for, filling, for the purposes of filling my buckets, uh, you do not want to use your garden hose for that. Uh, these buckets are really hard. These containers are going to be really hard to fill from a household faucet. So you're going to have, you probably need a hose. You do not want to use the household hose. Those hoses can have bacteria in them, and more uh, importantly, and maybe worse, they can have lead in them. So you do not want to use those. Go down to your local hardware store. Uh, I bought these at a local rural supply store, and I went to the RV section, and I bought a water quality, a drinking quality uh, water hose uh, that I can use to take the water from my spigot outside to fill my buckets with. So this is a really good thing to have on hand. These hoses do not have lead in them, and uh, so they'll be good for filling your buckets or whatever, you, your, your containers, your 50-gallon containers, whatever you're going to be filling those with. So now that we have all of our supplies, let's get started with the disinfecting process. Okay, so I'm going to start by opening up one of my water containers. You know, the only downside of these containers is that these handles kind of make it difficult to take the top on and off. So I'm going to remove that handle temporarily while I take the top off of this. So first thing I will do is I will put two quarts of water into this container. And 
doesn't have to be exact, just fairly close. So I put two quarts of water into the container. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Clorox and I'm going to add my Clorox to this. Now I need to add a teaspoon per quart. That's, f that's two teaspoons, but this is a one half teaspoon whole, uh, spoon, so or measurer. So I'm going to have to put four of these in there. Okay, so I've got my Clorox in there. Next thing to do is put the lid back on this thing, and we're going to shake this and move this around for 30 seconds. And I'm going to actually do this right here on camera. Um, so I'm going to be moving this all around. I want this sloshed around in here really good. This is going to disinfect this container um, really thoroughly. I'm going to rotate it every time I move it back and forth. I want to get every portion of this covered with this water. Okay, I think that's about right. So the next thing I would do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to dump this somewhere. And all we have to do after that is let this air dry. And I'll do that with each of these other three containers as well, and they will all be sanitized and ready to store water. Okay, the moment of truth has come. Uh, I've sterilized my water bricks. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna fill them with water, and then once I fill them with water, I'm gonna put in these water preserver drops. Now, these are really interesting. I got them off of uh, uh, Amazon. Uh, they're supposed to be really good. This will help preserve your water for up to five years uh, in these buckets. Uh, I'm not going to leave it for five years. I'll rotate it out. But you've got plenty. This preserver is going to be better than adding Clorox or something like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my hose, which I've already got running. This is my water safe hose, and I'm going to fill my buckets. Okay, so I've just about got all of my water buckets full. Uh, now I'm filling them all the way to the brim. I want to leave as little air in these buckets as possible uh, because remember, air and sunlight are the two things that can cause bacteria to grow. So I'm trying to put extra water, let them overflow, and then I will put the lids on. Now I've got the lids over here to my uh, uh, left. Uh, I think they're to my left. Where did I put them? Um, oh, here they are. They're to my right. <laughs> okay. So I've got my, my lids, and I'm going to put my lids back on, and I put them on nice and snug. And once I do that, I'll add my handles. Now these will be the, oh, I've got to put my water purification in first. I forgot to do that. So let's do that next. So, okay, so the next step is to add our water purifier. I've already taken it out of the package. I've removed the safety seal. I'm supposed to put in uh, eight drops per gallon. So if this is three and a half gallons, that's 24 plus four, that's, that's 28 drops per container. So we'll go in here and do this. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And I'll, I'll save this for the next group of containers. So now the next thing is to put my lids on. Make sure they're threaded properly.
Now it's just a matter of reattaching my handles and storing them on the shelves. So I built some metal shelves. I just bought these down at Lowe's. Uh, these are supposed to hold a thousand pounds per shelf. Um, so they're pretty sturdy. I think I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that they're going to hold this water just fine. Um, this is about, uh, if you figure 28 times four, uh, that's, you know, about 112 pounds of water uh, sitting on those shelves. I've got them right there, so when I need them, all I've got to do is come get one of these containers, take it upstairs, and put the spigot on it, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Okay, so we've cleaned our, water, our containers. We've filled them with water and purified the water, and we're storing them safely in a cool, dark place. Now, the next thing I want to do is just demonstrate what do you do when you need to drink the water. Well, it's really not real practical to pour it out of this big old spigot here, this big old hole in the top of the bucket. Uh, it's a lot of water. It's 28 pounds. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a spigot that you can purchase from Waterbrick. Uh, it, it's an add-on purchase. comes in three pieces. You take the spigot, and you have a cap that has a hole in it, and you're simply going to thread this into the cap. Now, the spigot has a white washer on it, so you want to make sure that's on the outside and that you haven't lost that washer. That's really important to make sure that's on there. Then you're going to take this black nut that also comes with it, and you're going to screw that onto the back of this. At least that's the plan. Screw that on. You want that nice and snug, because you don't want this to leak, right? Now, before you put this on, make sure the handle is right in line with the cap because you don't want the water to spill out when you pour it when you turn it over because if it's open at all it'll come out that spigot you want that spigot to be nice and, and perpendicular to your cap before you put it on so I'm going to take the lid off I take my handles off before I use uh, this lid you've seen me do that before um, it's just a whole lot easier to work with the lid when the handle is not on there so I'll take this I'll put this on it screws and just threads on real easy And then this will turn around to where you need it. I'm going to lay this on my counter so that it hangs over the counter. Have a glass. I simply open my spigot. And I have water. Nice, clean, fresh, drinkable water. This was a really great project. You can call it Water Storage 101 if you want to. Um, we learned a lot. We learned about sanitizing our containers, filling our containers and purifying the water that's in them, using a drink safety hose uh, to fill them with, then we have to store them in a, in a nice dry, cool place away from sunlight. Really great project, great way to get started with your survival storage at home. Uh, this is the way I've gotten started with my water survival or water uh, security. I'll be adding more of these uh, later on uh, in, in this fall. Uh, my goal is to get to about a month's supply of water, and I think if I can do that, we'll be in really, really good shape. So, in the meantime, remember what we always say. Stay strong, stay prepared, and have a blessed day. We'll see you real soon right here on Cowboy Survival.